Okay, so is this gonna work? Is this sorry? Right? A lot of people here. I haven't shared this stuff with anybody yet. This is um, this stuff I've been thinking about for a long time, um, and I've been working on a book on it for the past nine months or so. But I haven't. Only my son has been subjected to this stuff yet. Only very truncated versions of it. So we're talking about the vagus nerve, um, and. I only have an hour and a half to talk about it. I would love to have two days to talk about it more, but um, so I'm just going to be able to give you a little taste of, of, of where I'm going with this. And there's 30 different ideas I'm going to try to get across. So it's going to be roughly three minutes each. So I'm going to try to keep it really short, really concise, really to the point. Um, and occasionally we'll, I'll open it up for questions or whatever, but I'm not going to be able to open it up all the time for questions, otherwise I'll never get it said. Okay? So. Um, Okay, the vagus nerve is a big, big, big nerve. Really, almost qualifies as its own nervous system. It's huge. It's the longest and most extensive cranial nerve in the body. Um, and it goes basically from the back of your brain, your emotional brain, your limbic center, down into your thorax and your abdomen. It innervates all your organs, basically. Your heart, your lungs, your breathing diaphragm, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys, your small intestine, your colon. But it also goes up into the throat and the face, innervates the muscles around the eyes and the cheeks and all that stuff. It goes down into the pelvis. So it basically hits everything. It also seems to, and this is fairly controversial and breaking news, but it goes up in, into the most of the cranial senses, if not all five of them, the sight, sound, you know, hearing, um, taste, and even into the skin fiber. So basically, it connects all the senses, all the organs, and everything goes through your heart to your emotional limbic brain. By the way, is the focus okay on this? Okay. All right, so, yeah, I think of it kind of as a giant octopus sitting on my heart and, you know, going every direction. But you can also think of it maybe as sort of like the, the New York City subway system of nerves. It's really big and it's really everywhere. Okay. Now, back in the day, this is Darwin, my favorite guy. Darwin was a big vagus guy. He was all about the pneumogastric nerve, which is what we used to call vagus. And he frequently said that the brain and the heart are the two most important organs in the body. And the vagus nerve is what connects them. And he felt that they were supposed to be in constant, continual um, com 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 communication with each other. And um, he clearly felt that in his own body. Unfortunately, we deviated from Darwin 150 years ago, and we've been going with uh, just the brain model for, for the past century and a half. And you see where that's gotten us. So, so I'm a big fan of Darwin, and so is this guy, Stephen Porges, who specializes in the ventral vagus. He talks a lot about the, it's got a more fancy name, but it's basically the branch of the vagus that connects your heart to your face and your throat. So he's all about social communication between animals. Um, between human animals, mainly. Um, but they did other stuff with the vagus. They used to chop it off. They used to chop it off to treat ulcers. Now, and that didn't work, because ulcers, <laughs> no, it didn't work at all, because it turns out ulcers aren't really emotionally caused. They're generally caused by a parasite in the nervous system. But, so, that was a mistake. They're also making another, another mistake these days, which is cutting the vagus nerve to treat obesity. Okay, and the reason they do that is because they get good results. When you can't feel anything in your belly, you don't eat. And so you lose weight. And so they think this is a good idea. But really, as most of us know, what, you know, what can be mistaken as hunger is emotional discomfort, right? So when you cut the vagus and you can't feel your emotional discomfort, you don't eat to smother your emotional discomfort, but you also can't ever heal your emotional discomfort. You can't heal what's wrong. You can't feel what's wrong, so you can't heal it. So that's a big mistake. Um, but there's other people working on the vagus uh, these days. Sandra Blakesley and Michael Gershon is all about the enteric, enteric nervous system and the connection to the brain through the vagus. Um, Blakesley is about the emotional aspect. Mr. Spock from Star Trek used to press on the vagus nerve um, to cause people to faint because it causes sort of an extreme parasympathetic response and you lose consciousness. But, um, but I'm saying there's something a little different. What I'm saying is that I'm saying that nature has selected the ability to feel light very intensely through the viscera. 
You feel things very strongly in your heart, your connection to your children, or your, your mate, or your tribe, or your place. Um, and life is supposed to feel very intense. It's my feeling that, um, that the ones of us that felt things more intensely probably um, stayed with our families more uh, intense and more strongly. We defended our people more strongly. And so there's a selective advantage. You know, we survived better the more we felt connected to stuff when we felt connected to the land we lived on, you know? So, so my contention is that the vagus nerve is what gives us this deep, strong, visceral connection to everything. We feel like this is our life, these were our people, this is our place. And it's a physical feeling. We're not talking about anything mental here. We're talking about very strong physical sensations. I'm also saying that in, in the modern day, um, things are so intense that we tend to shut this down. Right, so we end up feeling more like this than like that. But that's it in a nutshell. And now you can all leave, because I've said it. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's what I'm going with. Um, and there's three basic points I'm going to, or ways I'm going to talk about this. There, um, how the nervous system functioned in the old days when we were still tribal hunter-gatherers. How it functions now in the modern world. And how we could be as fully viscerally innovated as we were when we were hunter-gatherers even though we live in a context that's less hospitable to that. So, 